Okay, let me take this moment to greet you family and to welcome you. It's a Tuesday morning, it's day two of our prayer and fasting. Um, I want to thank God for affording us this moment where we can gather once again in this fashion. Um, I pray that you, you woke up with new strength. You are refreshed. Um, just before we start, I want to acknowledge quickly some people that have joined us on Facebook. We have two platforms. We have people that have joined us on um, Zoom and others on Facebook. So I want to welcome our Facebook um, family. Um, let's see, we have uh, Simelela family, family Gama Mubunu, Sisneli Tuswa, Mamu Babra Makuba, Zingiswambuke, Memory Munetsi, Mizo Mimza, Sule family, Nogazi family, Sisnokwanda Ngozwana, Vuiswa Lieman Tanjana, Afika Manjati. Good morning, family. Mamu Makuvaro, Zimbabwe. And um, so I welcome you all. Um, I welcome you all. We still continue with Matthew chapter four. Remember the theme for this week is man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So yeah, Sister Mb, good morning and welcome. I want us uh, to take a moment to pray um, as we open this meeting. Now, those of us that are on Zoom, please remember when we are praying, you unmute. When we're done praying, you mute yourself. When we are praying, you unmute. Um, when we're done, you mute yourself so that we can be able to hear um, one another. So um, I want us to, to open in a word of prayer and then we, we will... Um, we will start with our prayer points. So let's thank God that he carried us through yesterday and let's thank him for today, um, for, for new grace, new strength, uh, for a new day. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, we honor you. You are the most high God and you are gracious. You are high, you are lifted up. We bless your glorious name this morning. Hallowed be your name, O God. Great are you and greatly to be praised. Great are you, O God, and worthy to receive honor, adoration. Lord, you have carried us, Lord, up until, Lord Almighty God, this far. This gives us confidence, Lord Almighty God, that you will carry us further. We want to thank you. We want to honor you, Lord. Lord, in Jesus' Lord, mighty Jesus name, Christ, thank you, you for your goodness kings. towards us. You are the Lord thank you for your goodness Lord, towards you us. Are the Lord, the Lord, 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 Lord
great us, my God, but great above Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Family, I want to thank you uh, once again for joining. We continue to bless the Lord. We continue to glorify his name. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 4, verses 1. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 and um, up until 4. Let me just put my music out. Um, uh, there we go. Um, okay. So Matthew 4, verses 1 to 4 reads, um, Afterward, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into a lonely wilderness in order to reveal his strength against the accuser by going through the ordeal of testing. So, so um, Jesus is in the wilderness. He is being tested. So, um, you know, uh, of the devil. Um, the Bible says that all this happened to reveal his strength. All this happened to reveal his strength. Uto verse 2. And after fasting for 40 days, Jesus was extremely weak and famished. He, he, he passion translation. We're reading the passion translation. And Jesus was weak and famished. Then the tempter came to entice him to provide food by doing a miracle. So he said to Jesus, how can you possibly be the son of God and go hungry? How can you possibly be the son of God and go hungry? Just order these stones to be turned into loaves of bread. He answered, the scriptures say, bread alone will not satisfy but true life is found in every word which constantly goes forth from God's mouth. So uh, the first point I want us to, to look at is the subject of mission creep. Yesterday we spoke about identity, um, the importance of our identity being restored, the importance of us you know, being the people that God intended us to be. So today we're talking about mission creep. Uh, what is mission creep? I want to give us an example of a mission creep. Now, I want you to imagine an army, you know, sent into a territory um, to go and rescue. Let's say uh, they are sent to rescue an ambassador or a president or a minister. They get there, they get the minister and his family. Whilst they were busy, you know, taking the minister and his family out, they see gold and they decide, yo, we can't leave this gold here. So they look for bags, you know, uh, to put the gold in. Whilst they are busy with that, they also see silver. What was supposed to be an in and out mission now becomes an extended mission. They find themselves now spending longer than they were supposed to and focusing on other things. So mission creep, is when we lose focus. Mission creep is when we begin, you know, to prioritize things that were not, you know, part of mission. They were not priority in the beginning, you know, but we begin to lose focus. And we begin to be engaged in other things that are not mission. That is mission creep. So the devil wanted uh, to change Jesus's mission. He wanted to bring in, uh, you know, another agenda. He's saying to him, turn these stones into bread. In other words, make your ministry about yourself. Make your ministry about yourself. You see, beloved, when you turn stones into bread, you know, you are actually uh, using building material for consumption. We know that God uses stones to build his house. The Bible says we are living stones. The Bible says we must come unto him as living stones 
stones built unto a spiritual house. So to turn stones into bread is to lose mission. For example, if, if, if a pastor sees people as a source of income, if a pastor sees church, you know, as a private business, that, 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 that's mission creep. You know, you're using building material, you know, for own benefit. So God, so, so basically there are resources that God has given us that are for mission. You have gone to school, you have qualified, you know, you occupy the position. That's God's investment in you. You know, that's God's investment in you. That's material for kingdom building. So, so the mistake that we do is that we are faithful to God you know, for as long as we are going up the ladder. And then we get to a place where we feel, you know what? I'm going to turn stones into bread. I'm going to use this for myself. I'm going to use this for myself. In other words, I'm going to meet my needs. I'm not going to use my talents, my gifts, my privilege for serving a generation. I'm going to use it to serve me. In other words, we focus on self, we serve ourselves, and you no one, even our power. You see, beloved, if Jesus could not turn uh, the stones into bread, it would not have been a temptation. What makes it a temptation is that Jesus was able to turn the stones into bread. So, so the enemy was saying, use your power, use your influence, use your authority for yourself, use it for your own benefit. But today I want us to pray for, 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 for a missional mindset, you know, an apostolic mindset, a mindset of the sent ones, that we are here on mission, we are sent to new, we are not here on our behalf. We are here. We are sent. You know, God has sent us for a time such as this, you know, to deliver a generation. So I want us to pray right now that the Lord will realign us, that the Lord will bring us back, you know, and align us to the mission so that we're not, we're not, we're not derailed, we're not sidetracked, that we don't find ourselves turning stones into bread. Can we pray right now? Father, in the name of of Jesus Christ Jesus. of Nazareth. Lord Heavenly Almighty Father, God, we, we see that the agenda God, of the enemy. To, Lord Almighty Heavenly God, his agenda is to Almighty deal God, us, is to sidetrack us, us, to pull us aside, calling us to send stones, Almighty God, into bread, so that we know that stones are building material, so that we know that we see the world, we see Lord, we see Lord, people <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, beloved, I want you, I want us to understand this. This is very important. This is one of the subtle, um, you know, strategies of the enemy to derail the people of God. Mission creep, where people now, you know, are, are more committed, you know, uh, are more committed to other things than matters of the kingdom. Always check your heart when you are willing, uh, you know, to sacrifice now, now, life is about sacrifice, and we are expected to sacrifice. But, but look at, you know, the area of your sacrifice. Why? Because sacrifice is, 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 is language of an altar. So the areas um, where you sacrifice are a good indication of the altar you serve. So the altar you serve most is the altar at which you worship. So it's very important, therefore, it's very important for you to look at where do you put your sacrifices? We're going to look at that, you know, later on. But I really want uh, to bring this as a, as, a, as a warning sign, as a way of warning to say, it's very important because you see, beloved, you, we come to an age, we come to an age when we look back, we realize that we have invested, you know, our entire lives, you know, where there's moth and rust. And the Bible says, invest where there is no moth and no rust. So you don't want to invest on things that don't matter. Beloved, if we Okay, let me not make these examples. Let, let, let's take our second prayer point. I will, I will take this when we do uh, sacrifice. Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 to 19. Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. It says, for many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross. So Paul is lamenting the fact that there are people that are, you know, kingdom citizens. They are children of God, born again, blood washed, spirit filled, 
but he says, I lament. You know, he says, you know, these people, you know, I, I say this with tears because they walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. In other words, they have been derailed, you know, mission creep. You know, they, 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 they are advancing now the kingdom of this world instead of advancing the kingdom of God. They are walking as enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ. You know, they are anti-sacrifice. You see, when you listen to believers now, you know, Christianity is comfort. Christianity is happiness. Christianity is fun. No one wants to hear the word sacrifice. No one wants to hear the words paying the price. No one wants to hear the words dying. No one wants to hear the words laying down your life. We want to talk about fun. I enjoyed it. It was nice. You know, I, you know, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I want to be happy and all that. You know, and all those things. Sacrifice is not part of our vocabulary anymore. Dying is not part of our vocabulary anymore. Denying yourself, laying your life down, taking your cross. We don't want to hear. You see, and Paul is saying people are beginning to walk as enemies of the cross, as enemies of the cross. You know, every time they sacrifice, people now I like, no, 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 no. That's control. That's manipulation. Beloved, there, it, it's important for us to understand that we cannot continue as enemies. Listen to verse 19. He says, their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Beloved, their God is their belly. And they glory in their shame with minds set up on earthly things. Beloved, I want us right now to pray against this concept of religion without sacrifice. It's very important, beloved. The Bible says, unless a corn of wheat falls on the ground and die, it abides alone. You see, sacrifice is still required. Sacrifice is still important. You see, that, that mistake, you see, the enemy wants us to put comfort before mission. He wants us to put comfort before mission. He wants us to focus on earthly things. He wants us to, 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 to pursue a prize without paying the price. But we're going to pray right now that God, once again, will lay down our lives. Lord, we pay the price. We, 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 we lay down. You see, beloved, this is key. This is key. You see, in anything, do you know, even in sports, even in sports, if you're going to be great, you can't have your belly as your God. Can I say a statement right now? I will say a statement. If you cannot control your stomach, you cannot be trusted with kingdom things. If you cannot control your stomach, the God of many people is their stomach. You see, we are fasting right now, and many are like, yo, 21 days, can I fast for 21 days? You see, it's a test. You see, beloved, if you cannot control your stomach, you cannot be trusted. Why? Because you can be bought. You can be bought like whom? Like who is so. You will sell your birthright for a bowl of soup. You see, a person that cannot deny themselves. exercise self-restraint. Not until. That person cannot be trusted with kingdom-prized things. So today, we want to trust God that will be able to sacrifice. We will say no to this. We will say yes to that. And we will lay our lives down for that. We will pay the price. Udu Paul, this one thing I do, I forget about what behind. He says, not that I have obtained it. No, no, no. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. I'm pressing hard. I forget about everything. I, 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 I press hard. So I am I'm, ch I'm challenging us today that we will bring back sacrifice into the equation. We will pay the price. 
You see, beloved, when it comes to our jobs, we work overtime. When it comes to our jobs, we work weekends. We take work home. But when it comes to the church, do you know what we do? We say, I'm tired. We say, no, I can't do it. You know, we say, I need rest. But when it comes to work, your boss can call you at any time. You're ready to jump. You're ready to work. It shows. It shows. That's the area where you can lay, put a, make a sacrifice. That's the area where where you can lay down your life. I'm saying it's time to lay down our lives for the things of God. It's time to pay the price. It's time to sacrifice. It's time to commit even in the things of God. This thing that church must be comforted. You know, this thing that I have come to be saved, the church. No, no, no. That thing must come to an end. In 2021, we have come to save. We have come to lay down our lives. We have come, you know, and we will pay the price. You, We put mission over comfort. 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 Come on, let us pray right now. Father, in the name Shata of Kara Jesus Kara Christ of Nazareth, Lord, our minds, Lord, have been and Lord, Almighty God, have digressed. But now we are praying, help us, oh God, the the enemy has lied to us, oh God. The enemy has lied, Lord of my God, and made him the cross of the cross of my God. It's about God, oh God, being happy. Lord of my God, I was a joy of God. 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 We are a set of God. We have have an agenda, we have an assignment, and right now we say yes to that agenda. We say yes to that assignment. We are ready to go. 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 Mandala <laughs> Now I want us to look at Matthew 16, verses 24 to 26. You see, beloved, what we are dealing with right now is, is so important. Um, a man like Samson, greatly endowed by the Holy Spirit, called to be a missionary, called as an apostolic, you know, figure to go and deliver the children of Israel. Um, when he met the Philistines, what happened is that he actually could not exercise self-restraint. Um, 
he was so powerful. Now, please listen to this. He was so powerful that no one can bring him down, but he brought himself down. His lack of restraint, his inability to say no is what destroyed him. So he was destroyed from within. He was destroyed from within. You know, his immorality, his lack of self-restraint, his pursuit of comfort destroyed him. You see, whereas his father told him not to go for strange and foreign women, he pursued, he used his power, his influence to acquire foreign women. And until he got to Utalaila, and Utalaila showed him flames and brought to his ministry to an end. So I want to challenge you that you trust God for grace to exercise self-restraint and not think of yourself too high. You see, I've seen people that they get to a stage in their lives when they are too high to do certain things. They can't serve anymore. They, 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 they can't do certain things anymore because they are too high. You see, when they were small in their own eyes, it was not a problem, but it gets to a place where no one can correct them. You know, they, they, they do what they want to do, the why they want to do, they just do what pleases them. You you see, you see, beloved, this is like the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was so big, no kingdom could bring them down. They, they self-destructed. Their lack of restraint, you know, brought them down. So we don't want to be like Samson. We don't want to be like Samson, powerful and mighty. Satan cannot get to you. He cannot bring you down. So he, will, he leaves you to distract yourself where no demon can bring you down, but your lack of discipline, your lack of self-restraint, you know, your, your, your inability to follow, your inability to obey, your inability to serve, your inability to, 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 to be in community brings you down. On. So I want you to catch this because this is very, very important. There are people where you are so powerful, you are a threat to the enemy, but your mind Mindset, you know, your belly has become your God. Your belly, you, you, you have come to a place where you are so stubborn. You do what you like, you know, the way you like it. No one can tell you anything. It's your life. You know, you, 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 you are the captain of your own ship. You are the master of your own destiny. That, that, that's where we start to self-destruct. That's where we, we start to self-destruct. So I'm challenging us right now. And, 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 and the trick is uh, the enemy wants to put, like I said, he puts comfort before us. He put comfort before us. He says, look, enjoy, have fun, eat and be merry, have fun. Why, why do you bother? Why do you bother about church? You know, and, 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 and sometimes we have good excuses, you know, for our conduct. We have good excuses for our conduct. You know, like I am tired. You see, here's my thing. Why are you tired when it comes to the things of God? Why are you busy when it comes to the things of God? You see, when it's the things of the world, you know, you are willing to put an extra hour. You see, the Bible says that in Gethsemane, Jesus went a little bit further. He went a little bit further. Though he was in distress, but he went a little bit further. We are willing to go a little bit further for the things that, you know, uh, suits us. But when it comes to the things of God, we're not willing to go a little bit further. So I'm saying to us today, you know, when we talk about sacrifice, we're talking about going a little bit further for the things of God. We're talking about, you know, putting another hour. We're talking about, you know, doing that thing. We're talking about serving. In 2021, sacrifice. Sacrifice is part of our vocabulary. Sacrifice. Now listen to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 to verse 26. Then Jesus told his disciples, you see, when the enemy says, turn the stones into bread, he, he doesn't want to, you know, to sacrifice. He, he's saying stones are hard, you know, 
Why? You are God. You are God. Why, why should you be hungry if you are a child of God? Serve yourself. You know, use your privilege. You know, but listen to this. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, if anyone would pattern their lives after me, let him, number one, deny himself. Number two, take up his cross. Number three, follow me. So there are people that call themselves followers of Christ. We say we are Christians. You see, beloved, here is a true test of whether you are a follower of Jesus or not. Have you denied yourself or you are doing what pleases you only? You see, have you denied yourself? Have you taken up your cross? then we can say you are a follower of Jesus. There's no following Jesus without self-denial. There's no following Jesus without self-denial. We'll talk about that. Verse 25, for whoever would save his life will lose it. You see, beloved, this season, this season of coronavirus has showed us that. He has showed us that nothing is worth anything. Here today, gone tomorrow. Nothing is worth anything. Mabika is worth Worth nothing vanity. My big house is worth nothing vanity. My big bank account worth nothing vanity. Now hear me, hear me in context. Yes, God wants us. The Bible says it is God that gives us power to acquire wealth. God wants us to prosper. God wants us. But you see, beloved, we must not lose the mission. We must not lose the why. We must not lose the why. Why are you promoted? Go and check Nehemiah. What happened when he was promoted? Go and check up Joseph. What happened when he was promoted? Go and check Esther. What happened when she was promoted? Our promotion promotion is for the mission. Our promotion is for the assignment. Our promotion is for the things of God. You see, you see, beloved, so we're not just promoted for the sake of being promoted. We're not just, you know, we are promoted so that we can be kingdom influencers. So if you save your life, you will lose it. If, if, if all your promotion is for just for you to enjoy, then I'm telling you now, it's vanity. Nothing satisfies. Nothing fulfills. It's vanity. Verse 26. For what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? So it's very important right now. If we claim to be followers of Jesus, we must follow correctly. We must follow correctly. We must follow correctly. Now, how do we follow correctly? Number one, deny yourself. What does that mean? It doesn't mean sukus katelela. It doesn't mean pilanje. It means, you know, you must learn to exercise self-restraint. If you ask me, I'm not a leadership guru, but if you ask me, what is the most important principle of leadership? I would say it's self-restraint. The ability not to exploit your privileges for the sake of the mission. You see, there are things that are your right. There are things that are your privilege. There are things that you are allowed to do. But for the sake of the mission, you restrain yourself. You know, there are things in the Bible, for example, that are a privilege of pastors. But for the sake of a mission, you don't demand them. For the sake of the mission, that's self-restraint. Kukwizinto onelunge lo lazo, kotu angenga yobu ngatu. Ungas funi, ungas tati, zililunge lo lazo. Self-restraint. So when we're talking about denying yourself, with kukwabanta babuza ayo, is it right for a Christian to do this? There are things that Christians are allowed to do, but for the sake of your progress, for the sake of the kingdom, you restrain yourself. Ubunatu, uznande, uti, uti ngenga yobuku mkani, anzo itata kota lilunge lolam. Number two, carry the cross. Beloved, there's a price to pay. 
There are books that needs to be written. There, there are sermons to be preached. There are territories to take. There are souls to win. That will cost you a price. And you, you see, the cross is the price you pay. The, I, I remember Apostle Max Mashiach used to say that I am honored with the burden and I'm burdened with the honor. You see, the honor, you know, of serving Christ is equally a burden, but the burden of, 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 of the cross is equally an honor. So we must be willing to pay the price. I remember oh, Peter and John, they had stripes on their back and these guys were so excited to carry stripes for Jesus. Can I ask you a question? All the things you have suffered, all the things you have suffered, were they, be were they because of your foolishness or were they because of the cross? Hmm. Yeah. Third one, follow Christ. It means to pattern your life after Christ. I want us to pray for accuracy. I want us to pray for accuracy in how we live our lives as Christians. You see, there's a worldly life. There's a Christian life. I want us to pray for accuracy, that we will live our lives accurately. We will be people on mission. It's amazing how we celebrate, you know, people that have achieved. But not, very few of us bother to inquire what it costs those people to achieve what they have achieved. So let us pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are praying. Lord, we are praying for grace to, Lord Almighty God, follow you correctly. Grace to follow you accurately. Lord Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we pray for Christians. Lord, that are living as the Christians that deny themselves. Mighty God, we are God Almighty, taking up the cross of Mighty God, following you. Lord, we we love it we are we are almost done i will ask who see uh, just to help me uh, I need the ability to share the screen and then we will. Am I looking?
please give me the right to share the screen. I just want us to read from the book of Philippians chapter 3. Maybe you can make me a host quickly, then I can um, share the screen. Thank you. Hallelujah. There we go. I, I want us right now to look at Philippians chapter 3. Um, amen. Philippians chapter 3. Um I want us to read from verse, um, I want us to read from verse five. I think this is so important from verse five, um, Philippians chapter three from verse five, um, the, the, the passion translation. Um, remember, we, we're going to do quite a lot of reading Maybe let me, I'll read the first part, then I'll tell you where we all need to read um, because I want us to see this. So Paul first gives his credentials. Let us read, let me read quickly, then I'll tell you when you can read. I was born a true Hebrew of the heritage of Israel as a son of a Jewish man from the tribe of Benjamin. I was circumcised eight days after my birth and was raised in the strict tradition of Orthodox Judaism, living a separate and devout life as a Pharisee and concerning the righteousness of the Torah, no one surpassed me. I was without a peer. Furthermore, a fiery defender of the truth, I persecuted the messianic believers with religious zeal. I want us to read verse seven. You see, Paul, everything that he will say is actually based on this CV that he has given us. So I want us to read verse seven together at the count of three. If you can read from the screen so that we read the same version um, so that we can pace one another. One, two, three, go. Yet yes, all of the account that I once took led it for, I have now forsaken them. I regard all as nothing compared to the delight of experiencing Jesus Christ as my Lord. Amen. Now listen to that. Paul is saying all these achievements and accomplishments, all these, you know, I regard them as nothing. Of course, he's comparing them to the delight of knowing Jesus. So this speaks to priorities. This speaks to understanding what is important. Now, if you are a medical doctor, that is important. But you see, it's important, but in the scale of things, being experiencing Christ as your Lord is more important, far more important. He says in verse 8, to truly know him meant letting everything go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting on the garbage heap. So listen to this, beloved. He is saying, I am don't measure myself. I don't, the value of my life is not my qualifications. If you were to value me, if you were to put a tag, if you were to 
put a price on me. The, my value is not my qualification. Yes, I've been to school. Yes, I occupy a good position. Yes, I have possessions, but that's not my value. You know, with or without these things, I am who I am. You see, beloved, this is so important because many people, you know, value themselves when they have certain things. When those things are taken from them, then they see themselves as worthless. Paul says, I have come to a place where I have found my value in Christ. So this connects directly to the teaching yeah, yeah, identity. Our identity is not in the things we have. The life of a man does not constitute of the things that he has. Our value is in Christ. Our value is in Christ. So as we pursue mission, this is so important. Hallelujah. I know we're over time right now, and that's why I'm reading on my own. So would it truly, verse 8, to truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting on the garbage heap. It's all like a pile of manure to me now so that I may be enriched in the reality of knowing Jesus Christ and embrace him as Lord in all his greatness. So whether I have a million rands in my account or I have 100 rands in my account, it does not add or take away from me. My value is in Christ. You see, I, 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 you see because some of us, We'll be faithful to the mission when we have money. We'll be faithful to the mission when we have a car. God, if you give me that job, I will save you. No, 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 you start now. If you give me that promotion, I will save you. No, 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 you start now. You lay your life now. Verse 9, my passion is to be consumed with him and not cling to my own righteousness based in keeping the written law. My righteousness will be his based on the faithfulness of Jesus, the very righteousness that comes from God. So I will stop there. I will stop there right now because of time, but I really want to encourage you right now to think about your own calling. Think about your calling. Think about your why, your purpose. Why are you on earth? Why has God planted you in this church or in that church? Why are you in this world, in this generation? We need to go back to the mission. We need to go back to the assignment. We need to say yes to the callings of God. We need, you see, beloved, today is about mission. Today is about assignment. Today is about, we are apostolic people. We are sent people. We are missionaries people. We are people with an agenda. We have a mission. There's a great commission. So think about that today. So I want to pray as I close. Father, I pray right now for everyone that is participating in this meeting. Lord, I pray, Lord Almighty God, that you bring us back Lord Almighty God, to our right place. Jesus died so that we may be reconciled to God. So I pray right now that we will, Lord Almighty God, go back to our place. You have called us for great things. Lord, some of us, Lord, as CEOs of companies for purposes of advancing, Lord, the kingdom. Some of us, Lord Almighty God, are leaders of others for purposes of advancing the kingdom. So I pray in the season that we will not lose sight of the assignment. We will not lose sight of the mission. That, Lord, we will not be like um, Lord Samson, who forgot about the mission, Lord, and pursued, um, Lord Almighty God, comfort, um, and pursued pleasure, Lord Almighty God, and it brought an end to his mission. Father, we pray that, Lord Almighty God, we will fix our eyes. Like Paul would say, this one thing I do, he's saying I'm consumed, Lord Almighty God, by, by, by the passion, by the passion, Lord, and I cling to nothing else but to Christ. So we pray right now in the mighty name 
of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Help us. Help those that are participating in this prayer, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that in 2020, we will live accurately in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Beloved, this is the end of it for today. Uh, we will meet again at 6 p.m. for 30 minutes where we will be, you know, uh, breaking the fast together. Until then, God bless you. Uh, be about the mission. You know, be about what God has called you to do. Uh, forget about what lies behind, you know, and press on to the mark of the high calling. So thank you so much. Um, let's meet again um, tomorrow. Um, thank you for sacrificing and making time to be part of, you know, this prayer meeting this morning. <laughs>